Hello, this is Charles Jenkins, the Quest Product Director for ReproSource Fertility Diagnostics. And joining me today is Dr. Damian Alasia, Senior Medical Director for Women's Health and Advanced Diagnostics at Quest. Our topic of conversation today is managing the initial evaluation of the infertile couple during the COVID-19 crisis. Dr. Alasia, thank you for joining us. Charles, thanks for the opportunity to talk to my colleagues. Dr. Leisure, you have a unique perspective for our listeners. You are practicing OBGYN for many years, and you're currently a medical director for Quest Diagnostics, who is helping to lead the charge in COVID-19 testing. In your leadership position, you've been engaged with many professional associations, hospitals, and private practices in their efforts to find a way to continue their care for patients. Let's spend a few minutes discussing what clinicians can do to care for patients that are struggling with infertility during the COVID-19 crisis. Can you summarize what you are hearing from clinicians and medical societies like ACOG and the American Society of Reproductive Medicine about how to best care for these patients with fertility challenges? Sure, Charles, and I really appreciate the fact that you mentioned um, care so many times in your introduction because care really is the core of everything we do. Um, connection, hope, you know, guidance are all part of that. But at the end of the day, our objective as a doctor and our responsibility and our privilege as a physician is to care for the individual patients. Now, when you talk about guidelines, you know, guidelines are national, the care is local. So when, as physicians or as patients, you know, let's look to local guidelines, local jurisdictions, if you will, to give us guidance as to what we can be doing in terms of seeing our doctors or seeing our patients. The United States is, you know, is a big place. You know, care is distributed in a lot of different ways. So in terms of supporting your patients right now when they're not able to come into the office, you know, look at your uh, local guidelines um, and your local you know, uh, policies. They'll give, you, they'll give you the guidance you need. The other thing is that you know, while the venue may have changed, the fundamentals of care really haven't. And I think that's really important to understand. And so, you know, it used to be that patients would come into our office and, and would, you know, take time, busy time out of their day, a busy day, and would wait. Now, with telemedicine and with the use of PSCs, we're able to provide care in, a, in a different ways. So telemedicine allows us to have that connection with the patient, you know, on a regular basis. And, you know, it, it'll, it's, uh, you know, it seems to be a little more informal sometimes, but it allows us, you know, to spend the time with the patient answering her questions or his questions in a way that's a little different. The only thing that's missing now is, you know, part of the workup, you know, that we're taught in medical school is to always include the physical examination. Now, we can't really, you know, do the physical examination in the, in the office setting. We're using telemedicine, but we can do a lot of things. And, you know, the history is really the most important part of the, of the assessment. The other part is testing, and certainly we can do the imaging, you know, um, ultrasound, you know, in a radiology suite, but when it comes to the testing, we can do that in our patient service centers, and we have 2,200 of them working around the United States where an individual patient can now go to a patient service center to have her test, you know, uh, done, her blood drawn, and a patient service center may be near her office or near her home, in fact, may be closer to her than the doctor's office. So using the venues of telemedicine and the patient service centers is changing the dynamics of the way we as OBGYNs or we as specialists in reproductive endocrinology are able to care for our patients. What diagnostic tests are available to help clinicians evaluate and communicate effectively with the couple? Well, again, I go back to, you know, it's the history, it's the physical, it's the imaging, and then the diagnostic test. And what you have here in front of us you know, are two test reports that really, I think, summarize very nicely what we're trying to achieve in the evaluation of the female patient and also the evaluation of the male patient. And I like the fact that they're, you know, split here 50-50 because that's exactly the way it should be. 50% of infertility is associated with male factor infertility. But let's look first at the female patient. The ovarian assessment report looks at five different, you know, um, analytes, FSH, LH, estradiol, inhibit B, and AMH, and actually gives us a visual picture of you know, the individual woman's ovarian health or, her, or of, her, of her egg supply. 
And that informs, you know, the patient and the doctor as to what course, you know, she might need to take, you know, going forward. Are we okay to wait? Do we need, you know, some stimulation? You know, or is it just a matter of timing? So, the other, so that's the first step um, uh, in the assessment, you know, the testing assessment. Now, on the other side, you have the male factor. Now, the male factor in fertility, as I said, you know, comprises about 50% of the issue. The, uh, the interesting thing here is traditionally, in order to get a semen analysis, the male would need to go to a specialized place. You know, would have to maybe wait a little bit, take time off from work, just like anybody else. And the, um, it would be an awkward you know, situation for many men, which actually decreased the um, number of specimens, specimens that were actually collected. The compliance rate was low. Now we have an at-home collection service that allows the uh, individual male to collect the specimen pretty much at any time, you know, during the day or the, or the night. And it's, it's a private collection that can be sent, you know, back to the, uh, um, the testing center and gives you a result that is just as good as what you would traditionally have gotten had you done, you know, one at a, a specialized place. So kind of in summary right now, what, we're, what we have is telemedicine. We have TSCs, you know, as a way to, you know, to get the test collected you know, very effectively. And then we have two big test sets, you know, for the female, the ovarian assessment report, uh, report, and then for the male, the comprehensive semen analysis that can be done at home. So it, it gives us a different way to care for our patients um, and again, to connect with our patients and help them in their reproductive journey. Dr. Alasia, thank you for your time and insight today. I'm sure that's been very helpful information for many of the listeners. For our listeners that would like to see additional information about the testing or the guidelines referenced during today's talk, you'll be able to find that within the same email that contained the link for this podcast. Thank you for your time today and for your dedication to providing care for your patients during this COVID-19 pandemic. And Charles, thank you again for the opportunity to talk about this incredibly important issue.